Previously on Alan Wake, I came to Bright Falls with my wife, Alice. Thank you for coming here with me. I thought maybe you could write here. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. Now, she's missing. Alice? <laughs> Alice? I woke up behind the wheel of a crashed car. I'm missing a week. I was attacked by shadowy men straight from a nightmare. The sheriff took me to the lake Alice and I had stayed at. But the cabin had disappeared. weather I've ever seen. You should put some coffee on. It'll warm you up. Hello everyone and welcome back to Alan Wake. Oh, this is great. Give us a start to see what the story is about and then flash us back to give us some additional context. Oh, and this is so cool. Our New York apartment in the middle of a big snowstorm and somehow it even manages to make an environment that's so opposite from where we came from look so beautiful and appealing the raging storm outside and how warm and cozy it feels in here oh, the box for a tv we must just be moving in well, let's switch on the coffee maker coffee's on See, this is what I mean when I say that I love it when games get to breathe. Usually you get a few minutes of this in the exposition of a game, and then it all becomes a never-ending chain of combat right up until the end. But this, it allows us to engage with the characters more, learn what they're about, and kind of learn the unique language that the game wants to speak to us in. In this case, this game not only has writing as a plot device and as a setting, but also I feel like this is a game that in tone wants to feel like a novel, which is a really interesting thing to try. All right, Alice, what are you up to? Oh, hey, I just finished those cover mock-ups. They're on your desk. Tell me what you think. No kidding. I didn't think you'd get them done this quickly. On occasion, I can perform all sorts of miracles, my dear. Oh, really? Well, you seem to think so last night. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. She's shooting on film. All right, let's have a look at these mock-ups. Do I examine the negatives, or am I supposed to be looking at the computer screen? Oh, they're in the other room. That was kind of weird. Could have sworn I could have just looked at them on a computer screen. These look really good. Sure, until Barry gets his hands on them, which, by the way, will happen over my dead body. The last time was the last time. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. <gasps> Alan! I'm coming. Alan, please check the fuse box. I'm right here. I'm on it, honey. Please hurry. I'm right here, baby. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just get the lights back on now, please. All right. Honey, it's a power outage. I I've got the flashlight. Okay. All right, here you go. Hi. You okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... It just really spooked me. Don't worry. We'll just break out the candles. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. I love you. Tell me a story, writer. Okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light switch. She called it the clicker. The clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Oh, sure. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help <laughs> you, too. Yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. 
<laughs> Seriously. I love you, even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. Mm, very well. Um, I don't think you have a concussion, but you've obviously been through quite a shock. You should take it easy for a couple of days. Thanks. Mr. Wake, we're done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. Doc Nelson was the image of a small town doctor. Sheriff Breaker had called him to the station to take a look at the cut in my head. Wow, he really is a small town doctor. Shows up looking like he's about to go out on a fishing trip, which I guess he probably is. Oh, wow, yeah, no, he just got back from a fishing trip. Oh, that is a keeper. I'm sorry you had to cut your morning fishing short for this, Doc. Oh, she's a beauty, ain't she? Not the biggest I ever caught, if you can believe that coming from an old fisherman like me. But she's right up there. Now, she's a largemouth bass, which is what you're after if you prefer a lure. Now, if you want either trout or salmon, on the other hand, then it's fly fishing for you. Um, you a fishing man, Mr. Wake? Oh, doesn't really matter, I suppose. But it can be very relaxing out there. You can't get me off the water this time of year. Closest thing to heaven. I'll take your word for it, Doc. I believe you'll find the sheriff in her office. Uh, just go down the corridor. All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate moments like this and the one we just went through because I, I feel like too many um, too many games have like a lost loved one as just a MacGuffin. I like it when we get scenes like that that really like humanize them and show what their relationship was like to make you feel that sense of determination that the character feels to go after them. And especially the guilt in having the last interaction being such a negative one. Thank you for testing the lights, Miss Weaver. Everything seems to be fine. I don't have the luxury of being complacent, Deputy Grant. The bulbs will need changing soon. You can't change them in the dark. I'll be sure to take care of it, Miss Weaver. Have a nice day now. Very good. I'll come back later on to remind you, just in case. Oh, we even have a high-voiced receptionist. The sheriff is waiting for you in her office down the corridor. Actually, hang on. Yeah, Cynthia Weaver. I guess you can call her the town eccentric. She used to be the editor of the local newspaper, but she's focused on, um, all other things these days. She'd fit right in where I come from. As you can see, she's a little obsessed with maintaining the light bulbs of the whole town, refuses to step on shadows, things like that. Back in her day, she wrote about all sorts of weird things in the paper. Bright Falls has a colorful history. Of course, what small town hasn't? Huh. Sounds like maybe she might know what's going on. Maybe she's already been dealing with this. And also, your voice sounds... The sheriff wants to see you in her office, Mr. Wake. Yeah, yeah. Your voice sounds more than... Hang on, to IMDb. All right, so it's not actually Lucy from Twin Peaks. It's just someone who sounds very, very much like her. Even that meeting room looks quite a bit like the one from the show. Ah, can't have a look around, though. Or can we? Yeah, it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky's gas station with Thornton. There's no sign of him. Over. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is Thornton. Look, we've located the Bray float. It's here. That's some good news, right? Stucky was supposed to be driving it at the rehearsal today. Over. Oh, give me that. Mulligan here. 
Looks like someone really thrashed the garage. Over. Okay, roger that, guys. Keep looking for Stucky. Jane's out. Hmm. So him going missing, I mean, in a town like this, that goes noticed. Well, let's... Sheriff Breaker is waiting yeah, for yeah, you I know. down the corridor in her office. And more posters for that missing kitty. Missing dog. All kinds of animals going missing in the forest. Disappeared June 20th, 2007. Identifying features. Knack for winning contests. <laughs> Are these contest winners or something? Like you win a sweepstakes or whatever and get your face in the game? Richard Baugh, Bruce Dansky, Jacob Miller, on a camping trip, overdue, haven't been in contact. If you've seen them or know their whereabouts, call this number. Thank you. There's actually a lot of people and pets going missing. I wonder if it's all centered around the forests? Come in, Mr. Wake. Your phone's on the desk. The battery was dead. It's charged now. Thank you. Have you started looking for my wife yet? My men are already on it. Now, can you tell me what happened? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We were arguing. I walked out of the cabin. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? How did you end up at Stucky's gas station? I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. She'd locked me up. Excuse me. I need to take this. Hello? Alan, please help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. Who is this? Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. I left a little something there to convince you we're all on the same page here. After you ditch the cops, you're going to meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Midnight. Don't do nothing stupid, pal. We're watching you. That just sounds like a dude. That's not the woman in the black veil. Mr. Wake, can I help you with anything? I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. You can get there through the cell corridor. Just don't mind Walter in there. He's one of our regulars. I thought he quit drinking for good. Oh, no such luck. He went on a bender and beat Danny pretty badly. He started shouting like that the moment he woke up. You can get to the back lot through that door and down the corridor, Mr. Wake. Uh... It's really dark in here. Should we be concerned about that? They won't listen to me. I, I need it to be bright in here. Yeah, dude, I know the feeling. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, you're all right. You're a good guy. Don't let anybody tell you different. You know, I shouldn't even be in here. The cops, they got it all wrong. See? Sure, 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 I beat him up, but I wasn't drunk. I mean, I wasn't drunk at the time. I only got drunk afterward. Okay, listen. Listen, listen, you gotta listen carefully now. Here's the kicker. That wasn't Danny. No, sir. I only look like him. You wanna know who it really was? It was a goddamn space alien! I know it sounds like something is drunk. You sound insane. like you're more than drunk. Believe me. I wasn't drunk then. Alright, well, screw you. And how did one of these end up in here? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be thorough, but some things are just a waste of time on purpose. The early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. Yeah, the early morning light, not that massive blow to the head you took. Well, folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. 
Deputies Mulligan and Thorne had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day is almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. Mm -hmm. Had a busy night, did they? The caller had told me to find a hole in the fence behind the police station. There was something for me in an abandoned car. Okay, uh, do we have to jump over or maybe there's something in this plot right here? Yeah, here we go. This story has really taken a weird turn. I mean, I think it really goes to show that I did make a good choice in coming back here because I truly don't remember any of this. Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Barry? Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Al, what the hell is going on? I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. You know, given what we learned last part, this doesn't sound like anything we've been dealing with up until this point. This sounds more like, well, it sounds more like the plot of a novel. Which leads me to ask the question again, just how much of this is actually real? Well, looks like you tired yourself out. Ooh. A writer is a light that reveals the world of his story from darkness, shapes it from nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. But did you finish it? Marvelous, Sarah. I just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions, of course. I can assure you that my staff has been reprimanded. Tor and Odin never caused any trouble to anyone when they were still living at their farm. Indeed. All we can do is to slow down the progress of their dementia. Uh, Dr. Hartman, I presume. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about... Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh, hey! Oh, my! Take it easy. Hey, nobody move. Get your hands off of my client. Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake... My offer still stands. Get me out of here. What the hell was that about, Al? We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were going to lock you up. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money, and he believed that Alice had been kidnapped. Anything beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. 
The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him. Hi, Rose. Oh, wow. I was just thinking about you, too. Great. I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after Max. Poor thing. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! Who's Max? What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. She even has a fan site dedicated to you. And she was very helpful when I was looking for you. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car? Just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy? And his body just disappeared? When was the last time you slept? So I was honest body? with Barry. Have you been drinking? No. Look, Barry, I'm missing a week. And someone's got Alice. Do and you everything's understand just... what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong. It's a good story. Could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Right, wait here. All right. So a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, very interesting choice of clothing. A Hawaiian shirt under a winter jacket. You've got an aesthetic, my friend. Also, so does this place. Look at this. Bucktooth Charlie, Colombian Mammoth. Which... Eh, well, we never actually confirmed it, but if the darkness can take over machinery, I'm real worried if this is going to be a repeat location at some point. Kind of curious, but this guy seems to actually have my back, so... I don't know, it is, for as weird as he is, it's kind of a relief to have him around. Let's go see about renting a cabin, I guess. We're going to need some kind of base of operations. And Goggy? Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, Rusty, right? You rent cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're illegal to use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is going to be okay. He got lucky. Mm -hmm. Max is still groggy from the shot I gave him, and I'd rather not leave him alone just yet. The form's on the desk across from the mammoth skeleton. Okay, wow. So is that trying to tell me that these things are going to be littered throughout the woods? Okay, boy. We're almost done here. Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen. You hit your head. I mean, geez, Al, come on. You gotta understand how crazy all this sounds. If you try to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha ha, let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. Whatever. We're gonna see this thing through. Sign this form and get ourselves a base of operations. They really want you to look around at the work they put into this. Look, even in this old game that it, where some aspects aren't as technically impressive, like in retrospect, these mountains still look gorgeous when we can actually see them. Look at that. Uh, I want to live somewhere like this. I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. All right. Look, Al, you're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went, poof, into thin air, 
A guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. You hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with too long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. You gave me an hour-long lecture on homeopathy last month. What was it? If there's no proof, it's pure bullshit. Period. Guess the laugh's on me, then. Al, come on! I mean, okay. Okay, maybe something weird happened to you, okay? Well, thanks for the heartfelt vote of confidence. All I'm saying is you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. What would you think if it was me? There's no way you should be going out at midnight with a gun. No one asked you to come here, Barry. Either work with me on this or go straight back to New York. Your choice. Uh -huh. If he's still with me through this, I think he's with me to the end. Yeah, this is proving a pretty difficult game to commentate on, considering I have to keep stopping to let the game commentate. But night falls once more. Al. Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI? Damn it, Barry. They'll kill her. This is not a goddamn debate, Barry. I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help, and I'll do it. You stay here, and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. First of all, crook of your arm, please. Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Bless you. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I'll bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a 15% commission. Uh, you talking about the locals being dangerous would be real irritating if you didn't realize how right you are. All right, uh, batteries. We do not have a gun, though. We lost that, which I suppose is a good thing. Wouldn't want to have that on us when the police show up. All right, are we going out the front door or the back? Oh, and we do have the ability to switch lights when we need to. Maybe that'll come in handy. Indoors represents safety now, really. Let's have a look at our accommodations. Huh. Not quite as nice as the bird leg, but... Apparently not quite as haunted, either. What is going on with that place? I mean, look, even if we discount the fact that we're currently on the lookout for some kidnappers, that still doesn't explain the black-veiled woman and, well, everything else that's happened to us up until this point. What happened to the cabin? Actually, Stucky might be part of this. Yeah, you do that. Anyway, what I was going to say is, um, Stucky might be part of it because we he's the one who rented the place to us, isn't he? I mean, he's the one who was going to give us the keys. Nothing in here. We also have to remember to keep an eye out for those stashes. I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done. But I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them. And they had Alice. Yeah, that's actually a good point. And they must know something I don't, right? I mean, they must know something about this. Did you hear that? There's a real strange echo that the crows took on at that last second there. This cabin seems to be abandoned. Although, maybe not abandoned, maybe part of the rental property. Let's flip these lights on. Oh, I prefer the atmosphere. 
Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your deer fest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> oh. Oh. No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly that. But I'm going to check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a large mouth bass early this morning. Wow, that thing's legendary now. Part of the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? <laughs> Considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. Under different circumstances, listening to that broadcast might be pretty relaxing. I mean, looking at that place, you kind of don't realize just how different it is to sleep in a space that isn't full of lights. So many different blinking, glowing things all over the room. Nice overlook, but we need to investigate whatever's going on over there. And so it begins. Something's trying to knock out the lights. Alright, let's see what's in this cabin. We're going to have to check each of these one by one. Lover's Peak is this way, as well as something called Moonshine Cave. Are we going to be going into a cave? Because that sounds very, very dark, which means very, very rife for enemy encounters. Ripe, I mean. Oh! You guys aren't a threat yet, but I have a feeling you soon will be. Oh, look at all these feathers hanging in the air.
I'm not quite sure I get that one, to be honest. There were a couple of different ways I thought that could go, and it didn't really take any of them. But honestly, it's kind of disturbing in that confusion. Yep. There they go. They don't appear to be taken by darkness just yet, but they are freaking out. Which is the first sign that whatever's going on out here is near. Alright, wow. I've been recording for 40 minutes. Here we are, getting to gameplay now. There's a hiking trail. Maybe from up here we can get a better view for what's going on. The other level was pretty good about being able to see landmarks when we got high up. No. In this case, I don't recognize anything, but we definitely always want to keep moving towards the light. I can see a rickety bridge crossing over the river, and something on the hill over there. Well, let's get down there. Actually, this car being abandoned is mighty suspicious, isn't it? What happened to the occupants? People have been going missing around here for a while. It seems like the police aren't really... Yeah, we definitely are not treating this nearly as seriously as we should be. Oh, he's still he's still alive in there. Well, I guess everybody's gonna know about this now. So much for the nobody believes me part. Oh, you are you are in a bad way. Mr. Wake. the way it was on that page. I found... Game true. You found one of my pages? So dark. It'll come back for me. You must... The lights. In the office. I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. Rusty had found a page from the manuscript. It would help me understand what had happened. So anybody who comes into contact with this stuff can be affected. And it's not just me. It's happening to other people. Oh, I'm going to get blamed for this somehow, aren't I? Wait, where's where's the office? Shh. Good boy. Where was where was the office? Oh, probably over there. The only way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. Okay, you don't need to talk about every little thing you're doing. Now let's unlock this door, open it, walk inside, have a look around, and see where that stuff is. Oh wait, we want to grab the manuscript page first. More ammo in the chest. And some batteries. I was too late. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. Well, that's what happens. That's what happens whenever you leave someone alone in a video game. Okay, not that I can really hear what you're saying, bud, but... What are these things? I imagine those will probably damage me if I walk on them. Oh, I'm going hunting, all right. All right, that's right. Line up for me. Line up. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang. Oh, come on. Bang. Thank you. Now, who else? These aren't just random apparitions. These are taken townsfolk. So, that's quite a lot of missing people for a town like this. You would think that they would have been taking this far more seriously up until this point. In fact, Agent Cooper should probably already be here. 
Uh, you're gonna get up as a boss, aren't you? And Something had torn a mammoth-sized hole in the wall. Okay, I just had to check to make sure that it was still there. Please don't feed the animals. Oh, great. Fishing is for those prisoners who purchase a park fishing license. No bay. Please, ah, uh, you're one of the speedy ones. Rusty, no. Never. Uh, now's not the time for the battery to fail. No, get closer, get closer, get closer. Right there. We need to corner you. That's how it works. We need to get you to get stuck on something. Nope. Oh, you've used up two batteries already. Come on. There we go. Okay, light him up. Come on, reload. Make sure he stays down. Keep the light pointed on him so he doesn't regenerate. I've never seen it happen, but I assume it will. And there he goes. More of you. All right, if we can keep moving and shooting. Ow. Oh, this camera angle actually makes it really hard to dodge this stuff without doing the dodge mechanic. All right. Trying to do it passively is not really worth it. It's far safer and easier to expend the battery and wear you down quickly. All right, let's grab all this ammo. All right, the public has to take notice now, right? I mean, look at all this physical damage. All these people? There's no way they can go on sweeping this under the rug. Or brushing it off as nothing. And somebody has to be hearing this. More of that goop all over the ground. This is a beautiful trail. Shame we can't just enjoy it. Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Ow, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. Ah, oh, good. We can finally get our hands on a flare gun. Something like... Never mind. Man, who keeps stuff like that in a safety box on a hiking trail? Manuscript page. Maybe from this overlook we can get a better view? No. Looks like we're going to have to crisscross this river in order to get all the way down there. But we are on the right trail. I wonder what these guys could possibly want. They're obviously separate from the woman. Her, obviously representative of what's really going on here. Stay on the trail. Well, no promises. I got coffee thermoses to find. Lover's Peak was at the far end of the nature trail. Yeah, true. But... There's a cave we haven't explored. A cave which has indicators suggesting a stash. This just became interesting. But for how dark it is in here, uh, there could be any number of threats. Hopefully they excavated all of the mammoth skeletons and such. Oh wow, this actually is getting dark. Hello. I see you there, but just like that you're gone. Site of frequent bootlegger activity throughout Prohibition. Ah, uh, shotgun, excellent. Oh, uh, who's doing all this? Somebody else obviously knows what's going on, has been preparing for it. But then again, it sort of seems in the plot like this is all happening because of me. So I don't know. 
Maybe it's something that was always here and needed me to come here in order to come out? I'm actually really surprised that I've been able to get through that cave without getting attacked. But, you know, that's how you do effective horror. Sometimes you set up a scare and then don't take it. Otherwise, setting up just becomes telegraphing. And you're going to deny me that heal point, are you? <laughs> Hi? Uh, I actually don't know about that. I don't know if I... Ah, never mind. I was just about to criticize, like, I don't know if I like it if you're going to just telegraph you appearing like that. But I suppose you can always just ambush me another way. Ow, I'm about to die. Kill you, kill you, kill you. Come on. One more. Die. Okay, that was tough. Uh, those batteries run out so quickly when you're focusing. It's like you really only have enough in a battery to disable one enemy. I think I remember you get certain upgrades when you move on, but the thing is, we, we have upgraded guns and such. We don't have upgraded lights. That's what's really screwing me right now. Now I'm looking at the top left, and it looks like our health is gradually refilling. I might have just seen something there. Not sure. Oh, manuscript page. Yeah, there's really no point in me collecting these things if I don't stop to read them at some point. Alright, tell you what, here's the idea. At the start of each video, or as soon as I get a chance, I'll stop and read the previous one's manuscript pages, whichever ones we have. Uh, me coming off the trail has not been a good idea. Me coming off the trail has not been a good idea at all. They're definitely out here. And I don't even know where there's a light for me to run to. Which is making me feel quite helpless indeed. Oh, they're definitely out here. Oh, nothing up this hill. It's a dead end. No, I'm starting to hear them. They're out here. They're out here! Run! Ugh. Get him! Oh, come on! I... Are you kidding? It seems like certain segments you're just straight up not supposed to fight. All right, here you come. The great old one. Felled by lightning in 1937. All right, well, I don't really have time to be a tourist. Just run, just run! Back up. All right, I think if I'm to do anything, oh, that, that just doesn't work. That you're, the big guys take a lot longer, and it drains our battery faster than we can do anything about you, giving you all enough time to close on me! Man, what am I supposed to do about this? Okay, bang, 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 bang. All right, just keep running, just keep running. And then when we... All right, there's got to be a strategy to this. Run... And when we run out of run, we turn around and blind you. And then as soon as we have that distance, we keep running. No! Come on! Come on! And you go away. Uh, I really got to figure out how this wants me to play it, because you can't really kill them before they reach you when they're in a group like that. But you can't run, either, because Alan has horrible cardiovascular health. Right, more ammo, more batteries. Maybe we should focus on killing the small guys first. They're disconnecting the phone lines. Apparently, the kidnappers aren't afraid of the police, but the shadow people are. Bear alert. Hello, what is that? That looks like somebody's bloody shirt. I... 
I'm pretty sure I just saw something over there. Oh, and I see something right there. It's almost like they're stripping and dismembering bodies. Is that it? That's another boot. Okay, just give me the enemy encounter since this is so blatantly an arena. And here they all come. All right, we need to keep you guys single file. And see, the thing is, I don't know if you block each other. Hey, buddy. That's one down, two down. Is there anything we can do to make this happen faster? Come on. Okay, I think you're mostly all down. Come on. Ah, uh, I can't look behind me. Which makes this real difficult. Ow! Ah, oh, ca this camera is absolutely atrocious. Like, I'm fighting against that more than anything else right now. Oh, I have no shells. Come on, back up. Okay, we don't actually... Come on. Dodge. Continue dodging, please. Need you to keep dying at your convenience. That is some nonsense that that axe just did. I don't know if it actually could have still hit me, but it looked like it still had some momentum even sailing around the top of the rock. There we go. Oh my god. That was like 80% fighting the controls in combat. Uh, I remember really getting sick of the combat. I had the achievement for apparently beating this on hard. I noticed that when I was looking at it when I started it up before. I don't see that as possible. I don't understand why I would have attempted to play it that way. And I also don't remember it giving me this much trouble. Alright, let's have a look over here. We always gotta check off the beaten path. I don't know what those thermoses do. All I know is that the game told me I want them, so I do. Do not feed the wildlife. All these signs talking about bears and wildlife, which just makes me really feel like there's gotta be some kind of horrific encounter waiting in these woods. Uh, nothing over here, either. I feel like half the time I'll go to sprint and dodge instead, and sometimes I'll go to dodge and end up sprinting and getting hit. Contextual buttons never really work well. This is the way, but it's blocked. Of course it is. I'm sure there's some death trap waiting up ahead. Which will enable me to figure this out. Dates from 1846, the year of the Oregon Treaty. The tree ring was cut from... Wait, the tree this ring was cut from started growing in 1846, the year the Oregon Treaty was signed. Other notable events marked on the rings. The Washington Territory being formed the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company and the town itself, Washington granted statehood, tree damaged in a forest fire, the Bright Falls Mining Company closes its doors after a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake. There's that eruption again in 1970. Mount St. Helens erupts, and a storm in 1987 finally felled the tree. Oh, it survived so much only to go down in such an anticlimactic way. Well, it must have been a big storm, so maybe not too anticlimactic. Uh, maybe I can jump over the fence on this side. More pages. Great. Oh, I love these things. And Sound Mind teaches us that these are always so stable and nothing bad will happen on them. Alright, so let's get an idea for where we've been and where we need to go. There's the visitor center after the cabins, through the forest, over to here. Alright, we must be close. These birds are even creepier when they're not trying to kill me.
This can go nothing but well. Actually, this would be the perfect time for the birds to start trying to kill me. Yep, 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 yep! Come on, focus, focus, focus! You know what? That's preferable. Uh, who are you? That flashlight's kid stuff. Yeah, it I'm really is. The away. Thank you, sir. You can see them too? Hell, of course I see them. Come on, we gotta move. Why? <laughs> because that's the way the story goes. Yeah, but let's move. I lost my gun back there. Oh, I've got a gun. Just keep that light steady on him. It took a moment, but then I recognized him. He'd been on the ferry when I first arrived here with Alice. He knew my name. We were headed in the direction of Lover's Peak. There was no way this was a coincidence. He was the kidnapper. Come on, Wake. You better keep up. Oh, uh, yeah. Up, and I'll knock him down, Wake. I did actually notice him on the back of the ferry when we first came in. And he talked about how it's in the story. He definitely knows about all this. And yeah, this light is way better. Obviously, we haven't tested it on the Taken yet, but look, it actually projects an area around it. No longer are we just staring at a pinhole like it's ready or not. Alright, if there's more than one, which I know they're going to be coming from the sides, I'm not even going to bother at this point. Uh, the problem is you keep switching targets, and you keep shooting at ones that aren't vulnerable. Dude, like... Focus your fire here, and things will be much better. If you could just strategize a little bit. The Taken strategize. They're doing all these flanking maneuvers. They're actually pretty intelligent AI. Shoot, guy, please. Thank you. Um, anytime. Anytime. I don't want to waste a flare on one guy. Look, I'll even highlight him for you. Thank you. Oh, good God. What is wrong with you? Alright, it looks like th if we leave a flashlight battery, it'll regenerate. Alright, another dude. Please shoot him, please. There's only one. There's only that accuracy. There is but one. Thank you. Is there something Use useful the for me in here? Hold them off while I get these boards off. Okay, yeah, we're gun. we're just gonna be using flares no now. Do, Are you kidding? Give me the gun! No time for back talk. Pull them off, damn it. Okay, we're just using flares now. Come on. Get close. All of you cluster together, Hold please. Scare them off. There we go! Yep, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, but it's not... All I can do is hold them off. I can't actually... This isn't going to kill them like it is if it's shot out of the flare gun. Alright, let's go. Go, go, go. You coming? Oh, now you'll fight. Let's knock the... Let's knock the thing off of all of them that we can. You're not going to kill them. Alright. Alright, hopefully when we get ourselves a gun, this flashlight proves to be a game-changer in combat. It's certainly a game-changer as far as visibility, I'll tell you that much. So we can middle-click at any time to pop a flare, but it won't kill them. This is it, Wake. A last stand. 
more players here. Get ready. We fight them as long as they keep coming. Give me the right. goddamn gun. They're coming. That's not how this goes. Get with the program, Wake. Come on. Focus on the closest ones, please. All right, ball's in your court now. Please just do it. Please, thank you. Wow, that was almost scary. It's a good thing you told me that was here. Wait, oh. All right, flare pop. This should be all you need. They won't get close while it's there. Pop another one. There's one more back that way. I think he's already vulnerable. Nope! And we're good. More. Another big boy. Alright, that's quite a bit faster. Oh, two big boys. Pop another flare. Keep him away. Come on. I, I really do need you to do the killing if you're not going to let me do it. Another big. Uh, just finish killing him, please. Thank you. Wow, I'm actually going to have to cut a good chunk of that just because it took so long. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? I knew you were going to say that. I read it all before. You're a hell of a writer. Congratulations. You're going to bring about something glorious and terrible once we get you some uh, proper editorial control. What the hell are you talking about? Where's Alice? I want the entire manuscript. Or she's gonna suffer bad. You touch her all. <laughs> Good job. Man, that punch was so hard it propelled you. Let me guess. because he thought it held some magical power. But I had no manuscript to give him. I had to get back to Barry and figure out my next move. Uh, I honestly thought that it was going to be like, okay, now you have the gun, but you don't have the light. Uh, it looks like there's like a cabin or a mill or something down there. And more of those swarming birds. All right. Th that's kind of what these woodsy segments are. Running from light to light. And from recognizable structure to structure. These guys kind of are the woods. That's the way this works. Uh, we have seven flares to spare. And we do indeed start running into these bear traps. Which shine in the dark. Which kind of defeats the purpose. Oh, I get it. They appear in our light. So it actually gives us a reason why we need to keep our flashlight on the floor instead of pointed forward. Okay, that's actually kind of smart. I actually do sort of like that as a mechanic. Because, as I was saying, these guys are the forest. I mean, they represent the forest. They represent the feeling of the fear of going off the path. We can kind of see what we're doing when we're on the path, but as soon as we step off, those black shadows descend and we have no idea where they're going to be coming from. In the way they're presented, they actually are doing a good job of being sort of a personification of vague danger. Yeah, that combat was a little bit, um, atrocious. Mainly, not even because of the way the combat works. I actually like the way the combat works. It's just because I feel like I'm fighting the camera all the time. 
and the controls. Okay, if we can just get down there. Oh, I hope this isn't going to be like a riverboat segment. Those are always difficult in games. Then again, it'll probably be a lot more stable than constantly trying to cross these fallen, rotted trees. Look, you can just see how decayed this bark is. Makes the whole thing feel so rickety, like it's just going to splinter under my weight. Uh, these tall trees illuminated in the fog gives such a sense of verticality to all this. Oh! You're right there. Oh, and you're immediately backed up by your buddies. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Climb back over, climb back over, climb back over. Keep running, keep running. Oh, you can follow me on here. And there you go. <laughs> okay, we may have just discovered a hack. But you're retreating. You know you can't get to me. All right. From right here, we should be good. I still see you moving in there. This flashlight is definitely a bit faster in terms of getting them down. But that's not really the problem. The problem is that in close quarters where you don't have time to prepare for them and kind of kite them, you just can't tell what's going on. All right, now announcing your presence doesn't mean anything, Flare. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking as soon as you reveal them yourselves, it's going to be necessary to pop a flare. All right, we're getting the hang of this slowly but surely. If we don't use a battery, it will slowly rise up. I think that feature is probably more than anything so that we can't end up totally unable to fight. Disembodied shrieking is absolutely horrific. Alright. Instant flare. That'll stop anybody who wants to sneak up on me, as they so often do. And give us time to take inventory of who's around. Now you're all that's left. One, possibly two. And you skinny guys are actually starting to go down in two shots instead of three. Or maybe that's because they were headshots and I didn't realize it. I will say this sort of extra advanced darkness that comes in, I don't particularly like it. I think it's kind of ugly to look at. And it's a shame that it's here because the rest of this game is so pretty. All right, how do we get into here? Camo netting, that's weird. Flare! I'm actually going through these at quite a fast rate now. Oh, you'll just push right through it, big boy! Alright, we got you. Dodge. Come on. Recharge just a little bit. Bang. Okay, I see. So we got regular guys, big guys, and skinny guys. The skinny guys go down in two, big guys in six, regular in three. I'm starting to identify the archetypes. All right, here we go. The big thing right now is we need to get ourselves some more batteries. Thank you. Bring our total to seven. But nothing in the shack itself. That's interesting. This camo netting... Actually, that kind of makes sense, because uh, he said earlier that we're not supposed to be hunting in these forests at all. And so any poachers, which at this point that's what they are, would want to hide their operations so as not to be seen. Ooh, and we get a new weapon, the hunting rifle. I imagine it packs a punch like the shotgun, but can be fired and be accurate at longer distances. I look at this and all I see is all the potential enemy encounters. What is that? A crashed plane? I heard the plane fall. 
It made no sense. It was clear that it had just fallen here, but it was very old and obviously hadn't flown in decades. Looking at it sent a shiver down my spine. That's weird. Uh, I'll tell you what, if we have a look over here, we can grab some more flares. Uh, more buddies. Oh no, not more buddies. That goop is all over the place. And a stash. There must be something either on board or at the end of that wing if we climb it. I would love to learn what the origin of this substance is and what it actually means for us. Uh, well, this isn't good. Or perhaps it is? Oh. Is this perhaps how we solve some kind of a puzzle? Is it a seesaw puzzle? Or is it just a thing that I did after foolishly climbing into a wreck haphazardly perched on a rock? Alright, well, in any case, we get this. I hope it's a flare gun. No, but I will happily take the flares. I think these things really need to be an integral part of our strategy. I think that's what we're learning in this segment. Because they had their tactics, we have to have ours, and ours have to counter theirs. What they want to do is appear quickly and then flank from behind while I'm shooting at the guy that's attacking. So I need to take away their opportunity to do that. I need to buy myself that extra moment to take inventory and see what my move is going to be. That's all it is. Maybe that's why they did it that way. Maybe they wanted to give me no options for a little bit so that I'd have that moment of vulnerability to showcase the need for these extra, like, tools and tactics. And of course, thinning the herd is always important as well. But we are getting there. No, nope, there's more of them. Kill as many as you can as quickly as possible. Where'd that other one go? There you are. Or are you a different one? It's so hard to tell in the dark. Alright. Uh, that's the flare I just dropped. But there's all kinds of structures here. This light probably doesn't help me directly. I could have sworn I just heard footsteps that weren't mine. But we buy ourselves a port in the storm. More hunting rifle, more revolver ammo. Thing is, where do we go from here? Just further forward into the fog? Oh! We're actually close to the mill. Uh, I've noticed so far that this game has a way with it where you often don't realize just how far you've actually come until you see the thing that you've been working towards all this time. Easy to lose sense of direction and space when you're wandering around in these woods. We just gotta make our way to those lights. That place clearly has power on, I just hope it doesn't cut out on us the instant we arrive. Real danger to be gotten from behind right now. Come on. Come on. There's at least two more. Now let's see how well this hunting rifle actually fares. See you back there, and bang. On you regular enemies, it's a one-hit kill. Alright, so I guess that pretty much confirms my theory. It is basically a shotgun that can be used at range. Hey, 
bitch! Uh, go, 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 keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, reach! Well, that's embarrassing, considering it didn't fall all the way. Uh, I almost kind of wish the game would go into first person in such closed spaces as this. The camera really doesn't like it. More revolver ammo, which we're actually kind of desperate for now. If anything, I should be using rifle rounds on the big guys uh, just to just to conserve my revolver ammo. Oh, this rickety old place. I've always wanted to find a place like this out in the middle of the woods. Just kind of rest here for a night. I feel like it would actually be really cozy. Enjoying the musty smell and the sound of the birds and crickets outside. Well, I suppose I would always have the constant fear of it collapsing on me. It's amazing how rickety a structure can become. The moment you put any weight on it. Hmm, there's another manuscript page right there. I don't think it's going to want us to platform, though. Oh. Yeah, that's a real good idea. Let's just use the elevator on this crumbling old structure, probably abandoned in, like, what, 1902? Counterweight down. And now that's just good enough for us to jump onto, because that's what this needs, is about 150 pounds just crashing down on it suddenly. But I guess it worked out in the end. <laughs> Ugh. For a second I thought that shadow, the way it moved, was somebody rising up from behind the objects over there. Alright, let's grab these. Is this something we can climb on top of? No? Okay, where are we going? Oh, there's a ladder. This looks like a place for a climactic battle. Ending with... Someone falling over that railing. Yeah, many Disney villains have met their end in similar circumstances. Uh, it's crazy how these areas are also... Not that this particular spot is familiar, but I like that there's that dichotomy between the day and the night in this same town. The darkness wears her face. Okay, so I'm assuming that her face... That's talking about the Veiled Woman, right? Nope. Uh, switch to rifle. You're going to start backing away because you know you're vulnerable. And two shots will kill you big boys. But even a full burst from the upgraded light, a full battery, I mean, won't be enough for you. I mean, we could have used the flare and that would have taken you down somewhat. But that only affects you for a few seconds, because you're going to back away. For as poor of a shot as the kidnapper was, you know, these Taken AI are actually quite good. They use actual tactics, you know? And it's not even just in the way that their encounters are framed, it's present in the way they behave even afterwards. If they know they can't do something, they'll retreat. Come on, you can squeeze through that. Flare gun? Uh, I would really like to be able to just use the light nuke. Is there something over here? 
Haven't found any coffee thermoses in a while. I also can't let myself forget that there are a whole bunch of these bear traps out in the woods. All right, that's right. Wear yourself down in the passive beam as much as we can. All right. Enough playing around. Yep. No. Oh, you're rushing me. Oh, I didn't realize you were a big boy at that distance. No. Ow, dodge! Come on! Half the time, the dodge just doesn't work. Alright, fire. Fire! And fire. Fire. The rifle, definitely the weapon of choice for heavies. Yeah, we... Even this isn't really enough. Even this flashlight isn't really enough. At least when those guys are around. If it's a swarm of littler guys, I can pop a flare. These guys, there's so few it almost doesn't seem worth it, but maybe that's not really the case. How many of them do we have? Seven, so it's not like we're lacking in them. Wait, was there something else? Oh, there was more ammo, but we have the limit. Campgrounds. So we established that guy is not in cahoots with the Veiled Woman. So there's a pretty good chance he's already dead. Or is going to be taken when we find him. Oh, great! This is what we needed? Oh, you're a really big boy. Alright, flare at the gate. Get as many of you down as possible. We want them to... We want them to lose... Flare. That's the only... That's our only hope, really. We just gotta... We don't have room to maneuver, so we need to make sure that he doesn't either. What do you think you're doing? I think he's down. So, yes, he is. Okay, bang. Bang. Alright, so you were just a regular heavy. You were just a particularly heavy-hitting one. Man, this is tough. This is tough, but I'm starting to get it. Weird that I don't remember this. I don't remember having any problem. Maybe I played it on easy, but according to the achievements, I beat it on hard, unless maybe that's a bug. Barry. Okay, this has got to end right now. I gotta fix this audio. In the absence of any way to fix the audio, we'll at least turn on subtitles. It won't help us when there's a lot of overlapping dialogue, as has happened a few times, but I at least got to make it easier on you guys, because I can barely hear it, and I know that, like, it's going to be even worse after I do the EQ. I was out of the woods. I don't think we're out of the woods by a long shot, to be honest. Anything back here? This place doesn't look like it's been run through, at the very least. I'd have to get the car from the locked garage. It would get me back to Barry faster, and the headlights were a welcome bonus. Oh, that's true. If anything comes for us, we can probably lead them back here. The thing about having light as a gameplay mechanic means there's a whole lot you can do with it. There's gotta be resources in here, right? Yes, hunting rifle rounds. 
had to find the key to the garage. Yeah, yeah. Ah, here we go. Ah, I was actually. A story is not a machine that does what you tell it. A story is a beast with a life of its own. You can create it, shape it, but as the story grows, it starts wanting things of its own. Change one thing and you set off a chain reaction of events that spreads through the whole thing. The characters have to be true to themselves. The events need to follow a logic that fits the story. A single flaw and the magic is gone. The story dies. Alice dies. Only thing... What if Alice dying was a logical outcome of the story? If you got to that point, would you accept that outcome? We're missing a week. Is this maybe the result of you trying to change it? Oh, she burr burr. Really didn't expect a third person game to hit me with a, a bathroom stall jump scare, but here we are. Well, that's dealt with. Let's get out of here. Get back to Barry, save him from whatever shenanigans he's gotten himself into. What? Oh, we're actually driving? I did not expect this at all. How did I not remember this? Okay. Well, there's driving mechanics, and oh, we can boost our headlights too, I suppose. All right, well, road kill. <laughs> oh no, you don't go down so easily. There we go. Oh, look at that. The way he wrapped around my wheels underneath me. Okay, now is the part where we get a power fantasy. All right, this is gonna be super cool. Even the passive light is enough to get them. And even without making them vulnerable, we can still hit them this way. Boom. Reverse into them. And over the cliff, good sir. We just gotta be careful we don't go over the cliff as well. Oh, this is some catharsis. Of course, all these vehicles being abandoned on the side of the road really suggests that we're not super safe in here. Not completely. You see my epic jump just now? Reverse, which is not very fast. Man, even the car headlights don't make you vulnerable as quickly as I would like, but here we go. We just need to completely eliminate all of you. And then we'll see about doing the rest of this. And smack! Yep, they have no way to account for this, do they? Is that everyone? Now let's see, can we get out of the car? We can, it's not just a scripted segment. But the headlights do not remain on when we get out. That would have been a lot more useful. Okay, goodbye. Uh, must be because I stepped into here. All right, let's grab more of these. Uh, might as well try my hand. All right. I'm getting way too distracted. We need to go save Barry. I'm coming, Barry. Uh, and I assume the smoke coming from the hood is indicative of the total repair state of this car, so we should get moving. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to kill everything in sight, despite my powerful feelings. Wait. Is there maybe stuff over here, though? Something we can obtain in that tunnel? It looks like there's a light! I'll just want to eliminate you before I go in there. Now this is a good way to save ammo. Park's closed! Come on, back up. And smacked and pinned. And smacked and pinned. Now, let's have a look around. 
There's another thermos. Excellent. And I thought I saw a manuscript page down in this tunnel. Now, I have no idea. I don't think there's multiple endings, but maybe by collecting these, and we'll find out at the end of this part, maybe we can gain some additional context. What do you think you're doing? Ah, oh, there's more coming from behind. Normally I would just run, but I'm kind of power tripping right now, so you're going to have to humor me, I'm afraid. It's actually kind of a good thing that I think we're approaching the end of this. Because this car I don't think is going to make it very much farther. Look, we're missing the hood. I think I spent too much time in combat compared to what it wanted. Alright, I just had to look down there. It's nothing. Alright, I'm coming, Barry! Is there anything else we still need here? Probably not. Ah, oh, they took the dog. Maybe there's something in here? Yeah, there's definitely something in there. Ah, another thermos. Ah. So, what, what, what's the logic behind that collectible? Is it just writers like coffee? Anyway, Barry, five or six more delays and I'll be right to you. Should be right up the bend here, and it looks like we're on foot from here on out. Well, power trip over. Can't we take this car instead? Oh no, it's the birds again. They dispersed when I turned around to look at them, but I do definitely think they're prepping something. The oh, and we got a flare gun. Probably the best weapon I could imagine against the dark things I was facing. This phone hasn't been sabotaged. Why don't we try using that, man? All right, forget these cabins. We've already gotten the things that are in them. We need to. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, flare gun, flare gun, flare gun, flare gun, flare gun. Pop goes the weasel. Now I wonder if these eat from the same flare supply as the as the regular popable. I assume it does. Nope. Ow. And pop, pop, pop. Oh, they're just not gonna stop. Okay, so it doesn't announce all of them. But these flares, as long as we have a flare gun will essentially act as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Oh, nice of you to join me, Light. That was an electric vehicle that was stopped down there. I wonder if they're not deliberately targeting people trying to restore power and lights in certain areas. It was the kidnapper. You son of a bitch! Where's my wife? Enough horseplay, Wake! You deliver the manuscript, and you can have your woman back. Simple as that. I don't... Listen... Listen, I'm gonna need time to finish it. I still need to write the ending. I need a week. Not done? I need a week. Two days. The old Bright Falls coal mine is nearby. You can find it easy, city boy. The main building, there at noon. You bring the manuscript, you get your wife. If not, well, uh, get me. Yes, yes, I, I get you. That's just great. Okay, this was the cabin with the radio. And we've got to get moving. Man, I told myself that I would do a lot of exploring in this game, but really, there's so much danger when you're in the woods that I don't really feel like going off the path. I just want to get to my destination. All right, we got to see how Barry's doing. That can't be good. We haven't seen any taken animals besides birds, even though so many are going missing. Birds over the phone. They're attacking the power, it looks like. Anything in here we can use? No, uh, it's just up to us and our flashlight. Okay, somebody is helping us on purpose. Oh no, they're not. They're actually separate. Okay, yes, somebody is deliberately helping us. We're not just finding somebody's stashes. 
we're actually being guided, aided, by somebody who knows what's going on. Oh, you think? All right, you're not gonna let me in, are you? Nope, didn't think so. Guess we're on our own. Oh, boy. Okie dokie, what do we do about you? We've gotta keep an eye out in all directions. They can come from anywhere. You'll head off if I keep my light on you. Individuals will fall away, but does that make the swarm any smaller? I'm not sure. In case that is true, maybe we'll want to use the passive light as much as possible. That's a good thing they're only attacking with a small portion of their total force. It seems like as long as I know where you are, this will just keep happening. Maybe it's actually better to let them attack. That way they'll come at us in force and we can get more of them. Oh! Or, better yet, let them attack in force! And hit them with a flare gun. Where are they coming from? Oh, they're strategizing! Okay, it seems like it's not about individuals. There's a total amount of health that the swarm has. And they come so quickly. That's pretty much what we need. The flashlight isn't going to be good enough every time. Yeah. All right. Flare gun away. No! Yeah, look at that. Look at that. No, no, no. Wrong. Ah, oh, we're out of we're out of flare gun rounds. All right, use that to keep them from getting near me. Flashlight to end them. Oh, they just got away. And there they go. Is this starting to thin out? It looks like maybe it is. They'll come from whichever direction I'm not looking. Suggesting that they are strategizing to an extent. Ah. Uh, oh, I'm now realizing the battery, it doesn't even cover... It doesn't even cover a full flashlight charge. They're gone. Hey, Al. I'm... I'm sorry for thinking you were having a psychotic episode, man. Yeah, now we're both having a psychotic episode. I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. You don't sound right. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the old dear diner. Good girl. of Alan Wake, part two out of six, I believe, and 
Man, we went out there looking for answers, but it feels like the mystery has only deepened. I'm kind of starting to doubt that this guy has Alice, because it doesn't make any sense. But the question is, what does he actually want with this manuscript? Clearly, the woman in black wants us writing. But why? And who is this guy, and why does he want that same writing? Like, what is so special about this manuscript? I'm really enjoying this so far. We're starting to get the hang of the combat, too, and the logic of what it wants us to do. Now, I still don't really particularly care for, like, the camera and the controls. Like, those are still wonky. But I think if we recognize the way the enemies are going to behave, that can inform how we have to behave, and it's the way we get out of most situations. I think I'm realizing the reason we're so bad at stamina is because it doesn't want us to run away. It wants every fight to be kind of a rolling skirmish, where we stop, hold our ground, do what we can, move, hold our ground, repeat. And the AI actually really does lend itself to that, so I think it's... I was pissed at it before, but I think it is really worthy of praise. Hmm, that's annoying. It seems like we found all but one page in Chapter 2. It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. A rerun of my own private snuff movie. A memory of my corpse. Alone at my own wake. Thinking in metaphors again. The femme fatale was gone. Only a sour taste remained of the kiss that killed me. That's weird. That's not... That's a completely different voice. A completely different... Hmm. Maybe one of Wake's other books? Speaking in the voice of his main character? This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge. It had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. My blood painted the snow red, a gruesome slushy, dissolved all the scattered painkillers and leisurely dripped down to the sewer mingling with the bile of the city, becoming one with it. I can see them now, my wife and my baby. Honey, I'm home. Uh, Max Payne? In spite of its human mask, to describe the Dark Presence as intelligent would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mass blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Cauldron Lake was breathtaking. Something caught her eye. A figure standing in the shadows behind the cabin, like a thin woman in a black dress. She lowered the camera and looked again. No one there. Just a collection of bushes that looked vaguely human-shaped. She shook her head and laughed. So she was aware. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. 
Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens, but she made him feel young and forget what a train wreck his long dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. I turned the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, Hidden by a rock sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason. Packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo. Things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew, and more. Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These little communities revolted him, and he didn't like the trees or the coffee. He now knew that impossible horrors lurked behind the storefronts and smiles. He desperately wanted to turn the car around and just drive until he passed out or ran out of road and booze. But he had a job to do. He had a rider to catch, at any cost. Hmm. Some foreshadowing? On more than one occasion, Alice had tried to explain to me how it felt to be afraid of the dark. To her, darkness wasn't simply the absence of light, but something more tangible than that. It was something you could touch and feel. Worse than that, it was something with a mind of its own, something malicious and malign. For her, things changed when they were wrapped in darkness. They turned into something else, something foreign, and nothing was safe or innocent anymore. I'd never really understood what she meant until now. The night had been one desperate situation after another. I was exhausted, and my body felt as though it had been chewed up and spat out. The flashlight was heavy in my hand, and each pull of the trigger sent a painful shock up my arm. But I was finally out of the woods, and things were looking up. That's when I heard the chainsaw. When Barry saw the darkness attack the visitor center, it made him a believer. The men Al said he'd shot, they hadn't been just locals on crank. Somehow the world had changed, like the channel had been switched without warning. You think you're watching a sitcom, and you're really watching a horror show. When the birds started attacking the cabin, Barry wasn't surprised, just terrified. The FBI agent's command froze me in place. I considered surrender. It was all falling apart anyway. I could give in, let someone else deal with it, but it felt all wrong. Call it instinct, his posture, the way he held the gun. He was no friend. Shots ringing in my ears, I leaped for the hole in the fence and stumbled into the darkness beyond. Hmm, hang on. Now, I had already noticed in the first part that some things seemed out of order. But there's a whole lot of things here that seem like they're maybe not... Uh, like, am I getting spoilers right now? Because I don't even know who this guy is. All right, there, there's things up here that look like they're potentially major spoilers, so I'm going to stop here and wait until later. And honestly, I'm not sure. Like, this is a lot. I'm not sure if I'm even going to keep doing these after part two. Because, wow, <laughs> what an info dump. Now, granted, some of this actually does give some good context. Info on things that we didn't see happen or sort of helping to explain where characters are at more. But I think, uh, 
Oh, wait, no. There's a little prompt on the bottom that says this can only be found in nightmare mode. All right, well, screw that and screw this. Okay, let's finish this outro. I cannot wait to keep pushing forward and figure out what is actually going on here because I am incredibly curious. But until then, if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.